make a short class today because I'm having also another class upstairs. All right. So, um, you know, I always had this, this question since I was a kid. We're going to find Amisali is going to leave Egypt. And together with them, we're going to have a package. This package is going to be two guys that are going to bring headache to Am Israel for years. You know who I'm talking about? There were two guys that left Egypt that already before they left Egypt, they, were, they made a lot of issues to Moshe Rabbeinu. And after they left Egypt, they were the cause of all the reasons why Am Israel made different sins. These two guys were the Tan of Aviram. And these two guys were the two guys that were fighting between them. And then Moshe Rabbeinu, back in the days, he told them, why are you fighting? And then they answered him back. You're telling me not to fight when you killed yesterday the, the Mitzri? Uh -huh. And then Moshe Rabbeinu said, and he understood that he had to escape. Rabotai, the Tan of Aviram, they're going to be troublemakers. Oh, ho. What are troublemakers? Right? So I don't understand. We spoke about it. That the Torah writes, V'chamushim alu b'nei Yisrael me'eretz Mitzrayim. Only one-fifth came out from Egypt. What happened to all the rest of the four-fifths? They died in Makat Hoshech. Makat Hoshech Bore Olam killed up all of the Jews that didn't deserve to leave Egypt. So I ask you a question, one second. Why you leave them, these two guys? The time of Iran, you being such a problematic guys, because of you, all the galut, all the problems that is going to happen later, what happened with Moshe Rabbeinu, you know for how many years Moshe Rabbeinu had to, had to leave outside his country over 60 years and most of his life and the answer is a fantastic answer say Chachamim do you know why Bore Olam didn't punish Natan Vaviram? because yes they made a sin but they never gave up that they have a potential to still leave Egypt. They may have seen, but they believe that they still can go out from Egypt. You know what that means? That means that the Yetzirah, I mean, the biggest Yetzirah that we can have is when the Yetzirah comes up to us and he tells us, you, you have no more chance. You know how many times you fell in the same Avera how many times you spoke negative? How many times you watched things improper? How many times you did things that you, you weren't supposed to do? About these Avera, you have no chance. Don't even ask for forgiveness. Forget about it. And say, Chachamim, the ones that are talking that way are, the, are all the 80% that they weren't able to, go, to leave the Egypt. They didn't trust in themselves that they can leave the Egypt. Amen. What a Musad that we can learn for our lives to understand that there is nothing that can stand in front of our will. Let me tell you the following Gemara. Maybe famous Gemara. The Gemara writes, Whoever says, I will make a scene and I will do the shuva. I will make a scene and I will do the shuba. And maspikim be yadola asot the shuba. He will not have even a chance from heaven to do the shuba. Until here, first part of the of the Gemara, famous and known. What's the next part of the Gemara? Right next to it. Amar Rabbi Akiva. 
also famous. Ashrechem Israel. Fortunate you are, Am Israel. Lifnemi atem etahariim umi metahar etchem. And Rabbi Akiva compares Am Israel to the mikveh. Ma mikveh metahar etatemeim. The same way that the mikveh purifies people that are tameh. Kacha kadosh baruch hu metahar et Israel. Also for the olam. Makes pure the people. Can you tell me what has to do the first part of the Mishnah and the second part? First part, you're telling me a guy that is doing Averot and he says, I'm going to do Teshuvah and I'm going to do Teshuvah and he does and he falls again and he falls again. God is not going to accept this Teshuvah. Second part of the Gemara is, Rabbi Akiva tells us that the Hashem is like a Mikveh. My Kesher. Rabotai, beautiful. It's such a... Rabbi Akiva disagree with the first part of the Mishnah, of the Gemara. Rabbi Akiva says, yes, whoever said out loud, I'm going to make a scene and I'm going to do the Shuvah and again I'm going to make a scene, they have no doubt Hashem is not going to accept this Shuvah. But whoever fell, he did a terrible scene, and he did Teshuvah. And he wanted to keep his Teshuvah, but he fell again. And again he's doing Teshuvah, but the third time he fell again. Says Rabbi Akiva, Ma mikveh metahen et atemeim. Do you know how many people can go to one mikveh? And to get pure? How many people that can deep in the mikveh and to become pure? You know, today is Friday. How many people in Nami said they go to Mikveh? Hundreds, thousands. And the same small spot of a Mikveh can make thousands of people to be pure. Guess what? Also the same guy that became Tamei, he touched a dead body and he goes to the Mikveh. And he comes out and he touches the dead body and he enters again to the Mikveh. Helps? Sure. And the third time he touches the body and he enters to the Mikveh. Helps? Yes. And a hundred times does the same thing. Helps. Says Rabbi Akiva, but Olam accepts us like a mikveh. Because when you do an avon and you do in teshuvah, you really want to change. Say, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you can fall thousands of times. And still I'm going to help you to be able to do teshuvah. Rabotai, teshuvah comes only when you trust in yourself. If you don't trust yourself, if you don't believe that you have the power to change, no teshuvah can help us. No teshuvah. I want to tell you, there is a goy. Gemara writes, chokhmah bagoyim ta'amin. We can, we can learn from the chokhmah of the goyim. There is a very famous goy in our generation. His name is Tony... I don't know what, Tony, Tony Robbins. Yeah, you heard about this guy? Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins. So this Tony Robbins became a very famous speaker. One, one time, they came to Tony Robbins, a guy that was, uh, I don't know how to say that in English, Tartamulea. How do you say that, uh, Mr. Freddy? Tartamulea. <coughs> that he repeats every, every letter he said many times. Yeah, how, how, how do you say that in English? You know what I mean? Yeah, he said the words. Stutters. Okay, he stutters. And he goes to, to Tony Robbins and he tells him, listen, I stutter already for years. I want to change. And you know why I want to change? Because I will dream. My dream is to be able to give a speech to, to the public. I love talking. And I know that I have this dome that I can, you know, I can give speeches in front of hundreds of people. But like that, it's impossible. No one would like to hear me. You must help me. You know what this guy, Tony Robbins, did? He was talking with him for one hour after they finished their speech. 
further talk. This guy went out from the room and he started to talk, not even repeating one sentence, one letter, one word. He gave a speech afterwards to over 250 people and he didn't repeat one word. People were amazed what he did, what magic he did. And he said, I'm going to tell you exactly what I did. I look at him and I ask him, do you have a fighter inside you? Wait a minute, fighter. Yeah. Someone that is ready to fight? And at the beginning, uh, he was not uh, sure about himself. Until I repeated my question many times with a higher tune. And then he told me, yes, I do have a fighter. And this fighter is ready to do all what he can to get it, to reach his goal. And he said, yes. And then he told me, he told him, so I want you to yell, to scream all this fire that you have inside, just scream it out. Scream! And he said that he opened his mouth and gave such a shot, a guy, it's called the Hebrew, yeah, like a lion. And he screamed. And from that moment on, none, he started to talk normal. And they asked him, what is this? What is that? This is going to tell you. The reason why people are not successful, it's not because they don't have money, because they don't have contacts, because they don't have... Uh, if you want to be a millionaire, you're going to become a millionaire. If you want to become successful in one area, you're going to become successful. doesn't matter which type of house you grew. There is only one thing that blocks us. There is, back in our head, in a certain moment, something that tells us, this you cannot pass. It's too big for you. There is a hole and there is a wall that is blocking you to reach to the goal. And only at the moment that you believe in yourself that you have the power to break that wall. To decide that no mountains are going to stop you to reach to your goal, you're going to be able to reach to there. But I go and ask the people that, were, that got to the, to the success. Famous people, if you want to call that success. Rich people, if you want to call that success. Whatever you want to call it. Or even Amavdil ben Kodesh, the whole people that became Tamidei Hachamim, knowing the whole entire Shas. Rav Chaim Kanievsky, I told you that many times. Rav Chaim Kanievsky, as a young child, this story I heard it from one of his friends at school. He told me, when I was at school with Rav Chaim Kanievsky in the same classroom, the guy was the worst kid in class. Not in behavior, in learning. Every single thing that the, rabbi, that the rabbi was teaching, the rabbi wasn't getting it. All the tests he was failing. And he told me, but there was one thing that made him to be the Gadol Adon of today. His father was taking him after school and he was sitting with him hours to repeat the same Mishnah again and again and again. So I said, wow. And he told me not. Not wow about the father. What about, wow about him. About the rabbi, Rav Chaim Kanetsky. Do you know what? Why? Because you know how hard it is to say to yourself, you know, you have to repeat me hundreds of times and I'm still not getting it. <coughs> and still being sitting there and to listen again. And to give another push. And Rabotai, <coughs> only when there are so, somebody is ready to give a push, Without giving up, you can get to the success. You know how a baby is born? Only the mother is ready to push. That's how it works. Right? If you're not going to like the, to push, nothing is going to happen. Rabutai, that's what happened with us. If you give up and you say, I have no chance, I wasn't in yeshiva, look how old I am, look what I'm doing in my life, look how many avirot I did. You're doing exactly what Mitzrayim and what all those 80% 80, 80 of people in, in Mitzrayim, they did, and because of that, they didn't went out from Egypt. But if you trust yourself, you can be even the Tanva Aviram. You can be the worst Rasha, 
but you trust that you can still have the chance to leave Mitzrayim, you're going to go out. That's the rule. And this rule is a fight that we have with the Yetzirah constantly. Never give up. Baruch Adonai